The corkscrew in this video is based on an old design of an in the field chain repair. Nowadays you use a split link as it's easier to forge and apply. Hello, I'm Mark Asprey. For this video I'm going to be using a stock of 4140, that is chromolybdenum with 0.40 carbon. Lay off about 4.5 inches of material and draw it down slightly over the bic. Dress the result and then forge to a round cross section on the face of the anvil. I'm going to reforge the end of the bar, 2 inches or so, down to about 5 16th of an inch diameter, basically a tenon on the end of the bar. Once these two steps are complete, you should be left with something that's between 5 and a half and 6 inches long. In the first 3 quarters of an inch or so from the transition, I want you to slot punch and then drift to about 3 eighths of an inch round, 5 16th if you will. I like to slot punch from both sides of the bar and then drift a size over the pritchel hole. I'm going to use a tapered drift as I open the hole, but a parallel sided drift would work just as well. Note how I'm moving the stock backwards and forwards across the pritchel hole to fully support the size of the hole. I'm drifting from both sides of the bar which is going to give me as close to parallel as I can get with a tapered drift. About half an inch behind the start of the taper bend the bar to 90 degrees. Make sure this is in line with the hole that you've just punched and drifted. Slightly curve the tenon if you get an opportunity. Bend the bar in two and thread the tenon through the hole. Of course it's easier said than done. You might have to give the tenon a couple of taps to help it on its way I'm hoping that you can see that curving the tenon allows it to thread the eye more smoothly. Complete the bend and then straighten the tenon over the offside edge of the handle. I'm going to forge a tab at either end of the handle to give the thumb somewhere to sit during use. My tabs are bent with a right-handed applicant in mind. Cut the corkscrew from the remainder of the parent bar. Crowd your measurement a little bit to allow for the bar to grow as we spread it in the next move. I use my cross peen to spread the bar, dressing it with the face of the hammer, and I'm looking for something that's about equal in width to the other end. Leave the handle with both bottom surfaces parallel and in line with each other. Then go to the bic and bend the tab so it's bending in the opposite direction to your first bend. The next step is to draw out the material that's going to be making the corkscrew. With the handle oriented vertically, lay off about half an inch, 5 eighths, and set a shoulder. Turn the top of the handle away from your hammer hand and forge in a second shoulder. Draw out the result to about 1 16th of an inch square or so. Dress any bending at the offside edge of the anvil, being careful to quench the handle to avoid damage. Dress the rough forging at the face of the anvil and then take the stock to round. I find I need about 4.5 inches of material to get 3.5 turns in the corkscrew. Cut off anything that's in excess of that. Once you've made your cut, point the end of the bar. Using a pair of scrolling tongs, bend the material towards one of the shoulders. Have the material rest on top of the handle on the same side as the second shoulder. Move to the offside edge of the anvil and turn the bend through 90 degrees. Finish at the bic with the corkscrew material being slightly open of 90 degrees. Take another heat, neither in the step or a suitable bottom swage, bend the corkscrew material through 360 degrees. I tighten the circle in the step of the anvil but I could also use a bottom V swage. Don't allow the stock to get too cold as you tighten the circle. Using the step is like forging the circle on three sides, helping to keep it somewhat round. I like to finish this forging with the circle being half an inch, 7 16th OD, outside diameter. I'm 
If the coils start to collapse, square them up with either your hammer or a pair of scrolling tongs. I use something akin to a sharpened screwdriver to open up the coils and I start at the open end, rotating the stock as I go. Try to twist the screwdriver the same amount each time you use it. I'm getting a little cold here, I should go back to the forge and get a second heat. Don't forget we're dealing with tool steel at this stage. Make your final adjustments, don't forget you can use your scrolling tongs if you need to. With 4140 I don't find the need to heat treat, just as forge is strong enough. Mal steel is too soft and will open up during use, but it's good practice material. If you like this style of forging, check out my books at markasbury.com. I have three books to help you with your blacksmithing studies. And if you're looking for a place to forge in North America, go to abana.org and have a look at their affiliate map at the affiliate drop-down menu.